So you've watched the first episode of how I've created this one by two cube base that is currently behind me, and now you're ready to take it a step further. I hope you've brought something to take notes with because I've taken everything that I wish I knew before I started this process and created an episode with it just for you. In this episode, we will be expanding a layer around the base and creating access to the second story. The description is filled with lots of information, including timestamps, so be sure to go check it out. Without further ado, let's get started with building the base. To start the expansion process, I'm going to craft a 4x4x4 four by four by four rock foundation, two 3x4 wall doors, and two lockable wooden doors. And this will create a new airlock that will allow access to the stairs, which will allow access to the second story. This leads us to tip number one. Tip number one is upgrade your ground level story to plated before you expand out too much. I make this a priority because wooden base parts draw a lot of attention to other players. And it's possible to do damage to a wooden base part with a melee weapon such as an axe or a hatchet. Now that we have the parts created, it's time to place them. And remember to keep your doors locked just in case somebody's sitting outside. I'm going to try to place this from inside here and it looks like it's going to snap very nicely. I'm going to lock this door just in case I get attacked by another player that's hiding in the bushes. It looks like the developers have been working more on the snapping system because I'm able to place these walls without getting off the foundation. Whenever I turn around, you will be able to see wood logs. And these wood logs are shown whenever there is a type of wood inside of the furnace. And this is tip number two. This will be a very helpful tip early in your base building experience because other players can see these logs and they know where they need to use their C4. You can see it disappear whenever the logs are removed from the inventory. So just remember this whenever you're placing your furnace so you don't make the mistake that I made here. I have built two wall doors here due to the resources I had at the time, but in the future I'll place another wall door here so I can lock access to the stairs. And now that we have the doors placed, I think I have just enough sheet metal to upgrade these two doors, and it will cost 8 sheet metal to upgrade one door. Luckily I had 24 already crafted, so I'm going to upgrade these and now I'm going to focus on this next section which I will need to make another rock foundation and I'm going to create two 3 by 4 walls. And I don't have enough rocks so I'm going to put everything that I have up except my mining pick and mine what I need. And I'm going to skip mining all of the rocks to save us some time. And now I'm going to craft a 4x4x4 four by four by four rock foundation and place my excess rocks back into my large wood crate just in case I lose my life outside. And now I'm going to create the walls. I'm just 3 lumber short of having 12 lumber so I'm going to have to cut a few logs while I'm out here trying to place these walls. I'll always lock my doors especially when I'm placing parts such in these early stages. And this is going to snap right on here really nicely. And I'm going to place this wall right back here. And we just have this one section to cover up. And this is a great time for tip number three. And tip number three is to always keep an axe inside of your base. It's important in the early stages of base building to cover up open areas where a wall could be placed. So always keep an axe nearby in case you're just a few logs short of being able to craft another wall. Okay, I've cut enough logs and now I'm going to create the wall that will seal the new layer. And now that it's created, let's run over here and place this. The server is about to restart in three minutes, but I should have enough time to cut the logs I need for stairs. So I'm going to place this wall here and start chopping logs immediately before the reset. And I'm going to go to structures and go to platforms. And in the platform section, there is an option to create a 3x4x4 platform with stairs. But you have to find a platforms 2 guide somewhere around the map. 
There is an alternative to the platform stairs and it is tip number four. But I want you to see how nice this stair platform is so you'll be on the lookout for the guide to create it. I'm going to place this in a way where the steps are on the left side and they will point to the middle of the upstairs section. And now I just need to put a 3x4x4 platform on the airlock room to completely seal off the second story. This is why I like the 3x4x4 platforms as the roof, because later on when you're ready to make your base second story accessible, they will make great ceilings to walk on. So now let's look at the 2x1 stairs, which is in the stairs tab, and I'm going to place the steps to where they go in the middle of the upstairs section where I could jump through a door frame. And the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna press the Alt key where it's freeform mode, and I'm just gonna place it right here in the middle where I could jump if I opened up a door. And if you're curious on how you put a roof on this, you have to make two 3M columns and create a four x four roof. And thanks to the snapping system, this works just the way it's supposed to. Now that the server has just reset, it's a great time for tip number five. And tip number five is to create your own lootable path. And inside this path, you need to have access to gun spawns, ammo spawns, and a lot of pallets. It will greatly reduce the time it takes to chop trees if you grab a stack of 64 lumber any time that you go on a looting run. And now that I've made it back to the base, I've mined a lot of iron ore, and now I'm creating sheet metal so I can upgrade the layer that we just crafted. So now I'm going to open up this door, and uh, there's really no reason to lock it at this point because we already have a really good airlock. But I'm going to do it anyways, and now that's going to be 16 sheet metal, and this will be 16 sheet metal, and these two walls will both each be 16 sheet metal. And I'm going to wait on the rest of the sheet metal to smelt in the furnace, so let's skip ahead to save us a few minutes here. Okay, I'm just finishing up crafting the rest of my sheet metal from ingots, and now I'm going to go upgrade this last wall. So now this has been expanded from a 1x2 to a 2x2 that it has plated walls all around it, making us once again melee protected. And here is the 3x4x4 platform, and I want to show you something about doors and platform placement. As long as this door is open and inside the room where I'm trying to place a new platform, it won't let it place unless the door is closed. So you just might have to close the door and reposition yourself in order to get the platform to snap correctly. So try to remember that if you're ever having difficulties with platform placement. Since that is my main airlock now, I'm going to grab the rest of the sheet metal that I have and upgrade it. And it's going to cost a total of 16. And if you're ever wondering how much it costs to upgrade one of these platforms with stairs, it costs a total of 23 sheet metal. I have a theory that if somebody tries to raid me and I keep these stairs wooden, that it will blow up if they try to blow a C4 on the next door. So that is a theory that I'm still testing and whenever I find out when somebody finally decides to raid me if it works or not, I will leave that in the comments below when that day finally comes. Here is the top of my base and there's a military base across the bridge and there is a swamp area and a road that leads to Hayward Valley. Along with that, there's also a road that leads to the bridge, so there will be a lot of traffic that flows through this section of the map. So let's jump outside of the base and take a glance and see just what other people are looking at from the outside. So right now the base is just a perfect little 2x2 two two with plated walls, and it creates a guessing game for somebody with explosives and the intent to raid. We want to complicate things as much as possible, hoping they will just move along. And the best thing that we can do is just keep expanding layers around the base. I just got back from a successful loot run and I've run out of space in my large wood crates. So now I have to utilize the small wood crates. And if you don't already know, most of the base parts can be placed on top of each other. And now it's time for tip number six. Tip number six is be careful with how you place your rugs. 
Rogues can give away your loot rooms if they lead in a direction through your base. Think of it like pointing a finger in the direction of the room you don't want them to find. What I do is save the rugs for my second story, or I place them in strange spots to divert the raiders. Okay, so I've crafted my walls for the second story, and now it's time to place them. What I'm using here is five 3x4 walls and three 3x4 wall doors. The reason why I'm placing these wall doors is because after I complete the second story, I will start creating layers around the base, and these doors will be accessible to those layers. All of these parts combined cost a total of 99 lumber and 6 scrap metal, and it will cost a total of 152 sheet metal to upgrade this to plated. Now that these are placed, it's time to mine 304 iron ore so I can upgrade this second story completely. Don't worry, I've skipped mining all of the iron ore and now we're placing it all in the furnace so we can smelt iron ingots. When you're smelting iron ore, remember to make separate stacks inside the furnace to smelt a lot faster. It's important to save all the time that you can when you're building your business. I've gathered half of what I need to upgrade this and I will need to make another trip to finish off the upgrading. But while we are on this subject, let's do tip number seven. And tip number seven is don't mine too much iron without putting it in your base. If you're close to iron ore like me, it's safe to put two stacks of 64 in the furnace and start it up and then go mine more. If you mine too much and you get slain, then you lose all of the time that it took to mine all the iron ore that you had. So be very cautious whenever you're mining iron ore and always keep an eye out for any kind of movement or anything that looks dangerous. Whenever you place a wall door, it will cost an extra eight sheet metal to upgrade the door, equaling a total of 24 sheet metal to upgrade the door and the wall door. And this cost eight more sheet metal than just a normal wall. So just try to remember that if you start using a lot of wall doors, it does have an extra cost with the door upgrade. Tip number eight. Tip number eight is raw meat can be cooked inside of the furnace. So if you have a furnace, you can kill a deer or other animals for meat and not have to struggle to build a campfire. And also while we're on the subject of nourishment, I would always be on the lookout for a blue water jug and they look just like this right here and this stores a lot of water so if you ever have any business associates over and they're visiting your base you should have plenty of water to go around with them and if you need to clean it just drop a water pure tab in it and it'll make the water very fresh your guest will be very pleased to have refreshments while that tip was processing, I've crafted the rest of the sheet metal needed to upgrade the remainder of the walls upstairs. So let's go upstairs and finish upgrading everything. Tip number nine. Iron ore nodes on average have 30 to 35 iron ore in each node. So with that being said, it cost 32 iron ore to upgrade a wall to plated. If you see five nodes of iron ore, then you know that it's worth five wall upgrades if nobody has mined anything out of it. And now let's slide into tip number 10. So whenever you're about to shoot a mutant, it's a good idea to hold the shift key to stabilize your gun even more. And here I did not hold down the shift key. And now I wanna show you how easy it is to kill something when you do hold down the shift key. So watch this. See how more stable the gun was and how easier it was to aim at the head? Oh, don't worry, if you didn't really catch that, let's just shoot a zombie. So whenever you do hold down the shift key, you can hear your character breathe in and basically you're just holding your breath to stabilize the gun better. So if you didn't know that, definitely start applying that to your aiming and it will change your life. And now it's time to expand the base and make it wider. I separate the expansion process into four corner expansions and right now we are doing the first expansion and this consists of three 4x4x4 rock foundations 
two three by four wall doors, two lockable wooden doors, and four three by four walls. And there will also be three three by four by four platforms. And this will allow us to have a second story that we can walk on and build rooms inside. All we're doing is putting three foundations on a corner and we're building walls and doors around it. And this is also going to create a nice little tunnel system for the outside layer. And it will furthermore confuse anybody that tries to raid the base. The current state of this base is very weak right now as it will only take 4 to 8 C4 to access the loot room, which would be a major business loss on our behalf. That's why it's important to follow the tips in this video so you don't get raided. I highly encourage you to build the outside layer around your base for added cushion and build up to the third story as soon as you can. It will cause several difficulties for anybody that tries to raid you if they even go as far as considering it. Large bases often go unraided because of the cost and materials it takes to actually raid the base. So do keep a mental note of that whenever you're building. You just want to keep expanding your layers outward and you want to go up as far as you can go. And in the current state of the game, three stories is as high as you're able to build. Tip number 11. Try not to build too close to trees and bushes. It can cause difficulties when placing base parts and it will make the expansion process more difficult than it should be. So whenever you're placing your plot sign and you're about to place your foundation, be sure that you can at least fit three layers around where your initial cube is. Here is the final product of the base in this episode. For the next episode, I will already have the other corner expansions created to save time and we will form the inside of the second story and begin expanding to the third story. Thank you for watching episode two of my base building tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next season's business premiere.